The NFL Draft is here, and let's get to the top defensive prospects for the San Francisco 49ers. So bright that we shine at. All we know is the Niners. Ready to go, let us find us. So faithful to the bay. I be sipping gold bar whiskey on the rocks. And a 24 karat gold on a watch. My 7 1 Chevy B tipping nonstop. Sounding like Trent Williams on the fly. So you know we can't stop. We be banging through your speakers. Wayne Breezy on the filter in the bleachers. You can tune into my show and I'm a teacher. Wayne Breezy, the phone I preacher. We so bright that we shine What's going on, 49er mm. Faithful? Welcome to the Wayne Breezy Show. NFL Draft is here. That's right. It's draft day. Let's get to these top defensive prospects. Let's not waste no time. We're going to get right to it. First, make sure you guys like. Don't forget to subscribe and feel free to become a member of the Breezy Bunch crew. All right. You definitely don't want to miss out on all the cool things. There is it right there. You can follow me at the Wayne Breezy. Don't forget to subscribe if you're listening to it on the podcast apple podcast spotify as well go ahead and give it a you know subscribe to that joint especially on spotify apple make sure you add it to your playlist all that good stuff man and feel free to share it um as well you can follow me on x formerly known as twitter at the wayne breezy as well as on instagram threads tiktok and facebook make sure you guys go ahead and give me a follow over there at the wayne breezy for exclusive content all right exclusive stuff stuff you can you know you want more you want extra it's gonna cost you a little something something but go ahead and go ahead into the patreon www.patreon.com backslash the wayne breezy go ahead and subscribe to that as well that way you can get all the exclusive content off season during season all that good kind of stuff that i got going on there's only going to be two tiers starting in the month of may so you guys can go ahead and pick your poison but you'll get more exclusive content and for everybody that's watching on twitch don't forget to follow i think it's still free with your amazon prime twitch.tv backslash the wayne breezy all right let's go ahead and get down to the show with the nfl draft here there's going to be players there's going to be movement there's going to be trades there's going to be trade backs there's it's, it's going to be fireworks i don't have fireworks sound effect but i got the fog horn so get ready faithful because it's about to go down let's start with the defensive interior i'm going to give you my top five defensive interiors i'm gonna start from five work my way back up to one and um yeah let's let's do that all right so number five gabe hall uh defensive uh tackle from baylor uh i think that this kid is a run stuffing defensive tackle he's a guy that can go ahead and plug up the hole um and uh, let, let me see really quickly if i can get this pool dubity dub 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 um when i look at gabe hall man i i i don't know why well, i mean obviously I mean, he went to baylor but i think the kid is going to be he could potentially a six round guy i think that's the grade that i have on him um he could potentially be a problem especially to come into san francisco 49ers um he finished the season with uh 11 and a half sacks um 77 total tackles and 16 tackles for a loss yeah that's 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 gabe hall uh hold on one second let me see if i can get this pulled up Like I said, you're going to get a powerful run stuffing guy. Hold on a second. Out of Gabe Hall. My number four was going to be, oh my gosh, this is so hard. Brandon Dorless out of Oregon. Uh, Brandon Dorless finished the season with 12 sacks, 108 tackles. Uh, 27 tackles for loss. Um, I think Brandon Dorless, these, this is a guy that can line up inside. He can line up outside. He's met with the San Francisco 49ers. Brandon Dorless can be, he's not a tweener. He literally can be utilized as a versatile player. There's a difference between tweeners and versatile players. And I think Brandon, Brandon Dorless will be a, a special weapon for the San Francisco 49ers. Uh, let me get this NFL Combine stuff up here. Give me a second. Thought I had the screen pulled up, and I did not. All right. 
Let's see if I can get his stuff pulled up. There it is. Brandon Doyle. He ran a 4.85 and the 40. Uh, he has a 1.68 10-yard split. Yes, sign me up. 30 and a half inch vertical, 9 feet, 3 inches uh, broad jump. He ran a 7.43 in the 3 cone, a 4.85 in the shuttle. Athleticism is 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 definitely, uh, you know, it's definitely good. Let me see if I can get his raw score. So I can see how athletic he is. Brandon Dorless. Raz. Oh, he's a nine. It's a, it, it's a uh, official eight, five, six. So a little bit under nine. Official eight, five, six. A little bit under nine. Mm, let's see if I can go to their site. That's important because I'm going to be looking up different. Different last and so you want to pay it. You want you want to know how um, how athletic these players are going to be. And I think that's super important, right? The athleticism, because the Niners like athletic players. You get a guy like Brandon Doyles here again, four eight five speed, uh, ten yard split is one six eight. That means he can chase guys down uh, in the in that ten yard uh, you know period of running. I like Brandon Dorless. I like what I watch on film. He can beat different types of. He can beat double teams. He has moves, uh, and again, you can utilize him and line him up inside or um, outside. So I think that's key for the San Francisco 49ers. I think when they look at different, when they look at certain players, I think the San Francisco 49ers are looking at players that give you athleticism and that can be somewhat versatile. I, I just kind of that's that's kind of what I'm thinking. Somewhat versatile. Um, for me, I think that's what the 49ers are looking. All right, Braden Fisk would be my third. Uh, number three, Braden Fisk out of Florida State. Braden Fisk out of Florida State. Uh, he ran the fastest uh, 40 for the defensive tackles, if I'm not mistaken. Um, he had a Braden Fisk of 478. 478 for Braden uh, Fisk. He's 6'4, uh, played at Florida State uh, for one year. He's uh, a five-year player. He did four years at Western Michigan, uh, and then he did the last year at Florida State where he transferred 19 and a half sacks, 191 total tackles, and 36 tackles for a loss. And the first thing that I noticed when I look at Braden Fisk, because I've seen him at the Senior Bowl, is his get-off. His get-off is ridiculous, and he has a relentless motor. So those two things under Chris Kosarek is something, you know, that the 49ers covet, right? Relentless motor. He already has the get off, which means he's beating the snap like before. Like he, the timing is perfect. Doesn't get caught off sides. The timing is perfect. I think Braden Fisk would add a nice pass rushing defensive uh, tackle, but you can see he makes these tackles, right? Because he's good against the run. He has what? What did I say he had as far as tackles for a loss? 36 tackles for a loss. For Braden Fisk, that's a problem. Braden Fisk is going to be a problem um, as far as his athleticism. Let's see if I can pull that up. Braden Fisk, Raz, I guarantee you, 988? Good gosh. A 988 Raz score. The dude is ridiculous. And again, uh, 478, 168, 10 yard split, same 10 yard split. As Brandon Dorless, we talked about. That's the number you want to keep important. That 10 yard split, 33 and a half inch vertical, nine feet, nine inch broad jump. Didn't run the three cone, 437, 20 shuttle, and he bench press. Mother freaking, he bench press 26 reps, man. The kid is athletic. Again, 6'4, 31 inch arms. This kid's going to be a problem in the NFL for wherever he goes or he lands and he gets drafted. All right. So that's Braden Fisk. All right. So that's my number three. Number two is Rook. Aroro. All right. I want to make sure I say that properly. He ran a 489. Rook Aroro. Excuse me. Aroro. Aroro. I think I'm saying it right, right? The H's are silent. I had to had to get corrected earlier. A 1.617 yard split. I said pay attention to that number. One of the fastest 10 yard splits. 489, 40, and the 40, 32 inch vertical, 9 feet, 8 inch broad jump, bench press, 29 reps. He's 6'4. That 6'4 number is, is is standing pat for me. I like that. 6'4, uh, 34 inch arms. So he's extension arm. He, he doesn't, he's not looking to get the extension, but as far as the length of the arms, <coughs> excuse me, that's what you want. 
You know what I'm saying? And he's another guy that can go inside and out. 294, especially on the outside. Those long arms, he can get those arms and wrap those arms around somebody. That's going to be a problem. So the San Francisco 49ers, you know, he he's going to be a problem. This is my number two. If I didn't say that, he's my number two. Rook or Roro is my number two defensive tackle for the San Francisco 49ers, and I think he can come in here and present a problem. I did want to go back to my number five, which was Gabe Hall from Baylor. He's 6'6", six, is a little bit taller, 34 and a half inch arms. I think he can get those batted passes down. He ran a 503, 1.72, 10-yard split, almost as fast as Trent Williams in the 10-yard split, 31 and a half inch vertical, 9 feet, 7 inch broad jump, 7.653 cone all right so he's in the he's in the high sevens there i'd like to see that number in the six was a big guy man you ain't expecting to cut and move like wide receivers but footwork is good uh gabe hall i think could be a nice little six round project uh for the san francisco 49ers brandon Dorless is going to be a second to a day two pick second rounder third rounder same thing uh with Braden fisk i don't think Braden fisk is going to move up to that first round uh same thing with rook or roro i think he's going to be a second rounder but a team like the 49ers might really like his skill set and they reach for him in the first round and get them a guy by number one defensive tackle ladies and gent he did not participate due to the injury and any of the events as far as pro day as far as combine but jerzon newton is the guy uh did i give rook aurora stats uh rook aurora uh stats 12 sacks 88 tackles total tackles and 25 and a half tackles for a loss let's get to my boy johnny newton johnny newton is going to be a problem in the nfl there's no RAS score on him uh due to the fact that he was injured uh with the with the injury but this dude whew, johnny newton had a foot injury so he had a jones fracture in the foot um i there's nothing more i can say about johnny newton 18 um sacks on uh career sacks in college he played five years in uh, uh at illinois 187 total tackles 27 and a half tackles for a loss he has most tackles for a loss out of all the defensive tackles um that i talked about uh jerzon newton is going to be a force i don't see him falling to 31 i just don't man like it's going to be by the first round defensive tackle too by the way uh, I have two first round defensive tackles, Byron Murphy, the second out of Texas, Rook, I mean, uh, and uh, Jerzon Newton. I think these guys are going to go in the first round. I just don't see him getting past a team like the Los Angeles Rams. But if the Rams take Brian Murphy, if they go a different route, there's a possibility. Uh, I'm trying to think of some other teams that may need some type of interior guy. Maybe Houston picks a guy. I don't know. Uh, but all I know is. If Jerzon Newton is at 31, I think you got to go run this card in. I don't care about speed, 10 yard split. I mean, it's there. It does. Some people say on film, it looks like he kind of he doesn't take plays off, but he's kind of out of out. He's not going full speed all the time on, on certain plays. Listen, I don't know if this kid is trying to uh, save up energy to make a big play and make a big splash. But listen again. 18 sacks, 187 tackles for a loss, and 27 and a half. I mean, uh, 187 tackles and 27 and a half tackles for a loss. Those are my top five interior defensive guys that I think will fit the 49ers very well. Again, number five, Gabe Hall. Number four, Brandon Dorless. Number uh, three, Braden Fist. Number two, Rook Aroro. And number one, Jerzon Newton. Let me know what you guys think, man. Uh, out of those guys, who would you want the 49ers to draft? All right. Out of those guys, who would you want the 49ers to draft? Let's switch it up, baby. Quick, quick. All right, let's get to the edge rushers, man. This is with the, the positions that make the bread. Uh, let's go with number five, man. I got to go with my boy out of Colorado State, uh, Mohamed Kamara or Kamara uh, out of Colorado State. Here's his stats just off the off the TIP, 179 total tackles, 47 and a half tackles for a loss, 29 and a half sacks, 29 and a half sacks. Listen. To the sound of of Mohammed Kamara, like this is a player that I just think the 49ers need to go ahead and do the damn thing. Like they can need to find him. Look, I I got him. I got a I I got a fourth round grade on him. Uh, but there's possibilities that he'll get drafted a little bit later. Uh, I don't I don't know if it's because he played at Colorado State. Uh, and as far as him testing, let's go ahead and take a look at that. 
real quick, let me get to the edge guys. Mohammed Kamara, he ran a four five seven. I I'm not I, that is fast. That is ridiculously fast. A four five seven. All right, he's six one. He's from Jersey. All right, Mike would love this kid. Uh, a four five with a one five eight ten yard split. Thirty four and a half inch vert. And a 10 feet, 3 inch broad jump. He bench pressed 23 times at the combine. 32 and 3 eighth inch arms. He's 248 pounds, 6'1". I'm sorry. The Niners need, I, I think they need another explosive player out there on the edge. I do. Uh, and Mohamed Kamara could be just that. Doesn't have a problem setting the edge with the run. Doesn't have a problem rapping and tackling. Uh, and he can get to the goddamn quarterback. How do I know? Because his career 45 and a half sacks that is up there that is that is ridiculously high uh for an edge rusher my number four is a player from uh, a college where i think one of the best edge rushers or defensive ends in the history of football played that would be demarcus weir got drafted to the dallas cowboys back in the day 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 javon solomon from troy uh javon solomon from troy i'm gonna try to see if i can find his uh he might have tested with the linebacker so let me see uh if if they got him as an outside linebacker testing so bear with me Javon Solomon no he didn't he didn't I don't see his profile um here let me go one more time at the edges I just want to see if he has and we'll check his pro day. I'm going to check to see what he did. In the, oh, there he is right there. He ran a 4.72 outside there on the edge at the NFL Combine. He has a, a one though a 1.66 10-yard split with a 37-inch vert, uh, 9 feet and 11-inch broad jump. Bench press 23 pounds. 6.1246. Um, let's just look at his production, all right? 183 total tackles, 49 and a half sacks. Thir I mean, 49 t and a half tackles for a loss and 33 sacks. This kid is very productive. I can tell you right now, he may be a one trick pony, but it's, but he knows how to get to the quarterback. And I think he would be a great prospect um, for the San Francisco 49ers. Um, I don't know if he's going to get past that third round third. Him and him and Mohamed Kamara could be third round guys, but I think they got fourth round grades. Like third, third to fourth round grades on these guys, um, so I'm I'm gonna go that this this kid is gonna go get drafted in the fourth round as, as long as with Kamara. I think there's gonna be some fourth to fifth round guys, so there's gonna be teams though that is gonna look at their skill set and say that they fit this skill set. Okay, I, I don't really care what school they went to, but the production is high. So Javon Solomon out of uh, out of Troy edge rusher out of Troy all right next I want to go Chris Boswell my number three Chris Boswell Broswell excuse me from Alabama Chris Broswell out of Alabama all right six three two fifty one he went to Alabama so like yes get me get me going he ran a four six but he had a one five nine ten yard split not a very high inch vertical 33 and a half it's probably common nine feet seven inch uh broad jump this kid was he played uh let's see uh four years um in Alabama. I got him for four years, 75 total tackles, more of an outside linebacker in my opinion, uh in a three four defense, but can put his hand in the dirt in a four three defense and be a defensive end. Uh 15 and a half tackles for a loss and 10 and a half sacks throughout his uh tenure in Alabama. Not super duper standout numbers, but a solid defensive end. Um, that can be productive, very good in setting the edge out there and stopping uh, stopping the run as well. Uh, and this is my number three defensive uh, edge rusher uh, or end <laughs> and for the San Francisco 49ers. I think he'll fit well. I think I think you get him here. He'll have his assignments. He'll have his roles. And he could beat one on one. Like so you, you, li you line up with him one on one. This kid is winning those one on one reps, all right? In my opinion. All right. So here we go. My number two, my number two is going to be, uh, we call him Pork Chop. So we're gonna go with Pork Chop Robinson. All right, out of Penn State. That's right, Chop Robinson out of Penn State had the second fastest time. 
for an edge rusher. We're talking 4-4-8 with a 1-5-4 10-yard split. I mean, his athleticism is through the roof. 34-and-a-half-inch vert, 10 feet 8-inch broad jump. This kid stands out with speed. And I'm, I mean, as far as comp, I mean, there's Hassan Reddick comps. There's D. Ford comps. I think Chop Robinson is going to be a problem. Again, 6'3", 254. Uh, and he he performed super well as far as his production though in college uh, three years he did a year at Maryland two years at Penn State he got 60 total tackles 20 uh, tackles for a loss and 11 and a half sacks so not high in the production but this kid can get to the quarterback out there on the edge by using his speed by using his bend I mean he's a good bend uh, there's going to be a team that's going to take that chance on him personally i feel like he's going to be an arizona cardinal but there's a possibility that he may slip to that 31st pick uh but i don't think he gets past that second arizona cardinals pick they gonna they like the hassan reddick build with their edge rushers that's what chop robinson fits um but for the 49ers it would be a great that's what robert bill jr is and i'm i'm I'm, they might be almost identical as far as what they both can do speed on the outside uh, just get to the quarterback using your speed. We'll see what happens, but I do like Chop Robinson. He definitely would make a, a good fit with the San Francisco 49ers and give Robert Bill Jr. a run for his money. And then number one, I mean, this might be the boring pick, but, you know, ask me if I care. I think this particular player screams, I'm a 49er <laughs> uh, due to his size, versatility, didn't run fast, I don't know if people care about a 495 from a defensive edge rusher, uh, but that his his job ain't chasing people down. The 6'5, 285 pounds, Darius Robinson from Mizzou or Missouri for you guys. 34 and a half inch arms. Again, didn't run fast. 495, but a 173 10 yard split. So, you know, within 10 yards, not that he has to tackle a Christian McCaffrey or I mean tackle a, a, a Trent Williams, but they almost have the same 10 yard split. They, you know, but this kid gets tackles in the backfield, 35 inch vertical. I mean, the at the athleticism is going to be through the roof. I'm sure his raw score is in the nines for sure. Nine feet, three inch broad jump, 21 bench press kid has power, uh, but his versatility is key. All right. Versatility is key. 112 total tackles, 21 tackles for a loss and 13 sacks throughout his five years in Missouri. Again, they started him in at defensive tackle, and then he moved his last year out to an edge. So he went through that process, changing his body, doing all those type of things. And I think he had one of the most significant, solid senior bowls I've ever seen. He was definitely the talk in Mobile. Great interviewee. Uh, I think he speaks very well. Uh, very well, young, uh, young man. I like Darius Robinson, and the reason why he screams 49ers to me they just lost Eric Armstead, who can be an inside-outside guy for the San Francisco 49ers on the defensive side. Uh, Darius Robinson has zero problems in stopping the run. You can line him up interior, and then when you get outside to the edge, he can set the edge. He can also get to that quarterback. He has the strengths and the moves to beat those one-on-ones. Darius Robinson, to me, would be that number one pick. But let me know what you guys think in the comment section. I want to know who you guys would pick out of my five. Is it number five, Mohamed Kamara from Colorado State? Number four, Javon Solomon from Troy? Number three, Chris Broswell from Alabama? Number two, Chop Robinson from Penn State? And number one, Darius Robinson from Missouri. Let me know what you guys think in the comments. Click, click, boom. Let's keep it moving, baby. We're on the linebackers, my favorite position of all. Let's go with linebackers. These are mostly off-ball guys, man. These are going to be those guys that can play middle linebacker, play weak side. I, look, I'm, I'm all about this life, man. Number five, I'm going to start with Jordan McGee out of Temple. Jordan McGee out of Temple. We'll go over his production in a second. But Jordan McGee, uh, I think, is one of the most underrated guys. I, I'm not even going to have him as a sleeper. He's probably a sleeper guy, but I'm trying to show and shed some light so people can know who Jordan McGee is. Ran a 4.55 at the combine. He's 6'1", 228 pounds. Again, here we go. 1.54, 10-yard split, 35.5-inch vert, and a 10-foot 
inch broad jump athleticism through the mother loving roof who's an athletic linebacker that the san francisco 49ers currently have well they all are you got dre greenlaw who's injured right now you got fred warner these are athletic guys he's not as tall as fred but he definitely has that bounce on the outside he could play the weak side linebacker he had 235 total tackles 31 tackles for a loss eight sacks an interception and 10 pass deflections that pass deflection that pd number is what i'm looking for that means he could drop back in coverage he has the speed and the ability to cover ladies and gents sign me up jordan mcgee he might just be my favorite uh out of these guys but he's my number five trevin wallace out of kentucky is going to be my number four trevin wallace linebacker out of kentucky you want an explosive guy that could get to the quarterback because he ran a four five one so he's even faster than my man jordan mcgee six one notice that size six one uh 237 pounds he ran a four five one with a one six two 10 yard split 35 37 and a half inch vert and a 10 foot seven inch broad jump yes sign me up sign me up sign me up another good coverage linebacker one that can drop back he was team captain in 2023 this kid is going to be a problem i think the 49ers he's met with the 49ers he's he's had a, a top visit with them 166 total tackles 18 for a loss 10 sacks see how that number went up this kid can blitz and he has the speed to get to the quarterback three interceptions and one pd all right so trevin wallace will be my number four i think he'll fit right well in this linebacking core and definitely will be an upgrade over whoever they got at that third linebacking spot if dre greenwell came back uh, i know we got two guys we want to see what they do i'm telling you right now these dudes that this dude can cover all right they can cover cedric gray out of north carolina is my number two that's right cedric gray out of north carolina is my number two you might not get the speed from cedric gray but i could tell you right now he's hella active uh he's he ran a four six four so we'll get to that cedric gray ladies and gents is six one and a half inches uh, he weighs about 234 pounds, ran a 464, but his 10 yard split is all I care about. These guys aren't running 40 yards down the field for those that are watching. They're not running 40 yards down the field. They might have to run at the most 10 yards down the field, especially when they're covering or trying to chase down somebody. Uh, if he has to make that chase down 40 yards down the field, he's probably not going to be the one to catch him because of his speed. But. I don't think he's going to allow anybody to get down there. 10 yards, he's getting there. 159, 35 and a half inch vert, a 10 foot broad jump. He's pretty strong. I can tell you what you're going to get from him. Pro freaking duction. Yeah, he's got hella missed tackles, but he's got hella tackles. 368 total tackles. 368, 29 for a loss, eight and a half sacks, five interceptions, and 13 pass deflections yeah you could try throwing on him but this kid is going to be around i like cedric gray i know he's probably falling down on the big boards but that would be silly to me i don't care about his missed tackles i care about all the other tackles that he makes i think getting a guy like cedric gray could be a problem san francisco 49ers would have that tackling machine out there on the football field sounds like a dre greenlaw guy big hitter as well uh, and again, we're staying in that 6-1 range. If you haven't noticed, we're staying in that 6-1 range, all right? I'm going to have to look up Jeremy Jeremiah Trotter Jr.'s um, stuff real quick. Jeremiah Trotter Jr. 40. I'll see if I can put that in there, and then, then it'll give me everything else. All right, so it looks like he ran. He Jeremiah Trotter Jr. is six feet. Uh, he's two hundred and twenty-eight pounds. A little, little smaller, undersized uh, linebacker out of Clemson. Really like this kid. They said he ran a four-six. I'm um, assuming that's probably at his pro day. All right, because I didn't see anything at him for him at the combine. Let's see if I can find something different. All right. So yeah, man. Look, I look. I you you want the kid that has the highest motor at these linebackers. I'm talking about is always around the ball, doesn't take a playoff, is 
and again, always around the ball. I can't stop saying that. He's always around the ball, and he's finishing. He's finishing. He probably played the least amount of time. He had uh, he had uh, three years at Clemson, 192 total tackles. Didn't start all three years, all right? But once he became that starter, man, the production was there. 29 and a half tackles for a loss. This kid lives in the mother freaking backfield, all right? Backfield, all right? Lives in the backfield, man. It's f- Listen, again, lives in the backfield. He has a 7.13 cone. That's what I'm seeing. He has pretty decent speed for a linebacker. Uh, 13 sacks. He has the highest number of sacks out of all of the five linebackers. He's out of even my number one linebacker. He also has four interceptions with 10 pass deflections. I don't know how the Niners would pass up on him because I know they don't need a, running, a linebacker. But it kind of makes sense to to not pass up on the talent of this particular linebacker because where's my ding, 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 ding? If you guys did not notice, Dre Greenlaw, it's the last year of his contract. I just want to put that out there. Last year, Dre Greenlaw's contract, they got to look to find a replacement. Or, yeah, and we know Dre Greenlaw's coming off an injury, but they got to look to find a replacement. So Jeremiah Trotter Jr., um, his father played in the NFL, so that pedigree is there. I think would be an amazing 40 freaking Niner. That's just me. That's my opinion. This is what this is all about. These are my opinions. Y'all can tell me what y'all think about my opinions for sure. I, I'm not mad. I, I promise. I won't be mad. All right. So Jeremiah Trotter Jr. is is one of my top guys. He's my actually my number two. And then my number one is Edrin Cooper. I don't see how he gets out of the second round. I don't think the 49ers are going to draft a linebacker in the second round. But if they want the best linebacker to me in this draft, the yes, better than Peyton. Yes, I, I think he is. If they want the best linebacker in this draft, it's got to be Edrin Cooper. 6'2", 230, 34 uh uh, inch arms okay he ran a four five one with a one five four ten yard split 34 and a half inch vert and nine feet 10 inch vert listen this kid is hell of athletic all right this is what he did too 205 total tackles played four years again 30 and a half tackles for a loss that's the highest number of tackles for a loss all right eight and a half sacks two interceptions eight pass deflections he is the typical prototypical like linebacker that can come in and give you hella production right away like literally hella production i think he's the number one linebacker in this draft uh junior i i don't have junior colson on my list and i and, and i know he's a michigan guy um but there are a couple of things i don't like about junior colson it's kind of like the way that they utilize him i don't i don't know if he's gonna feel he would fit well with the niners even though he is a versatile player but edrin cooper is my number one linebacker out of Texas A&M. So, guys, give him a check out, man. Check out Edrin Cooper out of Texas A&M. I think he would be a problem for the San Francisco 49ers. Let me know what you guys think in the comment section. Out of my top five, number five, Jordan McGee out of Temple. Number four, Trevin Wallace out of Kentucky. They had a top 30 visit with him. Number three, Cedric Gray out of North Carolina. They met with him at the Combine. Number two, uh, Jeremiah Trotter Jr. from Clemson. And number one, Edrin Cooper out of Texas A&M. We almost done. Stick around, guys. We almost done. We got to get to the cornerbacks. Now, this is where it gets tricky because I don't have super top guys. I, I Like Nate Wiggins, I don't think he's going to fall. I think somebody's going to take the chance because it's just his speed. So I don't think he falls to the Niners. But, man, if he did, God, it would be a great pick. But let's go with number five uh, as far as my corners. Here we go. Ennis Rakestraw out of Mizzou. Out of Missouri. Yes, I got two players from Missouri that I'm definitely, like, owned in on. For the San Francisco 49ers. It is what it is. It is what it is. Now, here you better see some quicker 40 times, in my opinion. You're going to see quicker 40 times from these particular players. But let me see if I, Ennis, 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 <laughs> Ennis Rake Straw Jr. was there. He ran a 4 5 1. All right, it's decent speed. Listen, I'm not asking these guys, you know, for 49ers, DBs. They're not going to be, you're not going to. None of them are four three guys, all right? And they're probably four or five guys. And so he fits the the typical Niner five eleven, a little undersized, little undersized. I feel like he's Jimmy Ward's height, but a little undersized at five eleven. Niners really look for those six feet guys. Uh four five one, one five, four, ten yard split, broad jump was ten. He's hundred and eighty three pounds, definitely light in the weight. But here's his production. I, I mean you can't you can't pass on production based off of like he's small he's tiny that's that that shit doesn't mean anything 
170, 107, excuse me, total tackles, eight for a loss, a sack, an interception, and 24 pass deflections. This is Charvarius Mooney Ward right here. This is this is your Mooney Ward. I'm not going to have high interceptions, but you're not going to get this goddamn pass over me, around me, through me. And his rake straw is a dog. I got a second round grade on him. Uh, I think he goes in round two. Might be the first corner off the board in round two. Somebody's gonna get some. Somebody's gonna get lucky when they get an Ennis rake straw. But I really like this kid. He would fit very, really well with the San Francisco 49ers. Number four out of Michigan, Mike Sandra still. Look, the Niners have outside guys. They don't have to toy around with playing Diamador Lenore inside, outside. They don't have to do it. They have they will have the versatility to do it if they draft Mike Sandra still. Because Mike Sandra still will come in and be a top nickelback in the NFL hands down. And since a lot of offenses make you come out in your nickel formation, all right, he's gonna see the field a lot, especially since he's a rookie. So they're gonna make sure that they you get they get their, their nickel out there. And here's what you can't hide from my man Mike Sanders. So you could talk about his size again. You could say he's tiny. Now he's definitely a former uh wide receiver. Okay, former wide receiver. He's tiny and I get it. I get it. Trust me. I, I get it. He's tiny. Four four seven though that's what he ran. One five one uh, split, forty inch vertical. The athleticism is like bang, 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 bang. All right, ten feet, eleven inch broad jump, a six nine nine three cone. Yes, yes, under seven is what I like to see. Now he's tiny. They got him as here as five nine, a one eighty two. So the weight is about the same, but the weight looks better on him as shorter opposed to taller and slinky. And this is why I think you put him in the slot because he doesn't have the height that you want him to play on the outside. He can play on the outside. He can also play in the safety role as well if you need him. But this kid's production went like this. 108 total tackles, 10 and a half tackles for a loss. He has zero problems making a big hit and tackling running backs and other guys out there. Uh, three sacks, seven INTs, and 13 pass deflections from Mike Sandridge still the Niners would literally get the best nickelback I believe in the draft if they draft a guy like Mike Sandridge still it's not even a it's not even a, a you know it's not even a question for me it, it, it would be perfect for them to get him uh, but hey if the, the Niners may looking to be go with a, a, a little taller guy it doesn't really fit the Niners build but again you can kind of put him in you could put him into the slot which is where he belongs. Like, don't play him out of his position. Put him in the slot where he belongs. Another short guy who is actually my number two, three, because Mac Mike was my number four. My number three corner is Max Melton um, from Jersey out of Rutgers. Another guy that's kind of shorter on the outside. He's an outside corner, 5'11", 187. But, man, the athleticism is going to be through the roof, man. He got an 86 uh athletic score he ranked third amongst all the cornerbacks and he ran a 439 with a 151 split 40 and a half inch vert 11 feet 4 inch broad jump and here's what that translates to uh throughout his collegiate career you ready 111 total tackles eight and a half sacks one i mean eight and a half tackles for a loss a sack eight interceptions and 22 pass deflections if the Niners are looking to get a cornerback it has to be this kid especially if they're not going to get a cornerback in the first round I got a second to third round grade on him uh and it's unfortunate like you know I, like guys are gonna fall but he's definitely gonna go in that second round to me more, more in a second probably earlier in the second if the Niners want him they're gonna have to move up to get him but the way he balls out is 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 uncanny, right? Like it's uncanny. Like he's just that dude um, out there on the football field. Don't let the five eleven size fool you. He is definitely coming in to play big. Kind of reminds you of Diamador Lenore, same type of dog. Yo, check out Max Melton out of Rutgers. All right, the guy that I fell in love with, my number two, Andrew Phillips out of Kentucky. So this kid is the one that I thought had. One of the best senior bowl uh, uh, weeks that I've seen um, out there. Andrew Phillips balled out uh, to me at those, during those practices and in the game. So here we go. Another 5'11 kid, 190. All right, we're getting a little bit more up there in the weight. 
Uh, not very high as far as his athleticism. 42 and a half inch vert, 11 feet, 3 inch broad jump. The speed kind of slows him down and brings his score down just a little bit. But he ran a 4.48. He's not slow with a 1.5110 yard split. This kid is not slow at all, and he plays really big. Now his production isn't going to be what we want it to be. Uh, you know, it, it's he's not an interception guy, right? He's not a guy for interceptions. So here's his production: at 82 total tackles, three tackles for a loss, no sacks no interceptions but he did have the 10 pass deflections all right 10 pass deflections for him this kid plays big man and you, it's it's hard to get it's hard to catch the ball on him he can get in your grill without drawing flags Andrew Phillips is a top tier corner I got him on a second round grade he may go in round two uh, but if he does go in round two it's gonna be early round two because I got him as with a second round grade so uh, the Niners are gonna have to do their due diligence if they're looking for a guy you gotta remember we talked about this as far as the guys that are uh, like that they drafted and signed in free agency there there's a lot of free agent corners next year between Ambry Thomas you got Ambry Thomas, you got Diamador Lenore, you got Mooney Ward, Isaac Yadam, uh, and Rockyson. Like these guys are all gonna be free agents next year. You're gonna get another year out of Samuel Womack, you'll get a couple of more years out of Darrell Luter Jr. But the Niners need to continue to replenish this cornerback room with great, great talent. Then my number one, my number one, didn't participate at the combine is Kool-Aid McKinstry. He also had the um the Jones fracture in his foot. Okay, he also had the Jones fracture in his foot, so he didn't participate. But he did do his pro day, and he ran a 4-4, four, four, uh, sub 4-5 in his pro day. So that's amazing. But, like, I, this kid is going to – I think he's the best corner <laughs> – He's not the best cornerback in the draft, but he's definitely a top three corner. You can say his counterpart, Tyrion Arnold, is, is better than him. It all depends on your preference. You're not catching the ball on him. He's not giving up the catch. He's not giving up the catch. He's six one. And he's not giving up the catch. I really do like Kool-Aid McKinstry. I think he's going to be a problem. 93 total tackles. Three years in Alabama. 93 total tackles. Five for a loss. Two sacks. Two interceptions. But 23 pass deflections. 23 pass deflections. All right. And that is crazy, right? 23 pass deflections. And I just I just don't know how to. I just don't know. I, like 20. Like I think he's would be the perfect fit for the San Francisco 49ers. 4-4 four, four speed, probably like a 4-4-5. Four, four, that's what they like. That, that's what they need. That's what you need your guys to run. 4-4-5, four, four, 49ers. I think it would be a perfect fit. So uh, let me know what you think about the corners. we got one more position to go in the comment section. Again, Kool-Aid McKinstry was my number one. But just to do a quick rerun, it's Ennis Rakestraw out of Missouri, Mike Sanristil out of Michigan, Max Milton from Rutgers, Andrew Phillips from Kentucky, Kool-Aid McKinstry, number one. Let's get to the safeties, baby. We almost done and we ouch. We ouch, you dirt. All right, here we go, man. Number five for me is Oregon State's Kitan Oladapo. Um, I don't know why people aren't. He's not high in these mock drafts. I don't get it. Like, what do you want? You want a guy that can tackle? This is the guy. You want a guy that's going to be give you production, It's going to be around the ball? This is the guy. He is a footballer, not just a football player. He's a footballer, 6'2", 216 pounds. This kid is going to ball out. Ran a 4.58, 1.59 split, 36-inch vert, 9 feet, 9-inch nine broad jump. And here we go, 249 total tackles, 15 for a loss, 6.5 sacks, 3 interceptions, and 23 pass deflections in his four-year stint as an Oregon State Beaver. I just don't understand why he's falling. I don't get it. Box safety for me. Talano Hufunga is also going to be a free agent next year. Are they looking to replace the box? How are they, did, how are they looking to use Jair Brown this year? We don't know. It's going to be a new system. We, and that's crazy, right? Because I know Nick Sorensen is there, and I think that's one of the reasons why they went with the inside guy because they want to see what Nick can do with some of these pieces that were picked, um, you know what I'm saying, from Steve Wilkes. I mean, this is Steve Wilkes' guy, Jair Brown's Steve Wilkes' guy. So we're going to have to see if Jair Brown can translate into year two under Nick Sorensen's direction as the defensive coordinator. It's going to be crazy, but 
This is a guy, I think, Kyan Oladapo is a kid that's going to be hella productive for the San Francisco 49ers. That's my number five. Number four, Sione Vaki out of Utah. I know Cole Bishop is a lot of people's favorite. He ran a good 40 time for these safeties. And I got the guy. I'm picking a guy that ran the slow 40 time. But Sione Vaki is a two-way player. And I know you don't see two-way players anymore in the NFL. But this kid can come back in here and do that. He's also a running back. But here we go. You ready? He's 5'11", 210, another box guy for me you're not going to have him playing center field much but you can have him up there around that line of scrimmage because you know what he knows how to do get to the quarterback he ran a 462 but it, that speed doesn't show on the football field if you watch the tape you're like he's not slow at all 154 split and that's probably why because football is done in short burst not long burst 39 and a half inch vert uh 10 and a half i mean 10 feet 5 inch broad jump here's what i like about him uh, as far I like his versatility I like the fact that hey man if they're not going to use him especially he would probably be the ultimate special teamer right and then work his way into either running back or safety he can't play both he would work his way into one but Kyle will get the opportunity to utilize him and figure out where he sees fit and the most production but here he is here's his stats as far as a safety 92 total tackles 12 for a loss two sacks one interception and five pds not the highest in production all right not the highest in the production again because he played both ways right <laughs> right but this kid is a footballer as well and the one thing that i do like about him is he finds that ball and makes a freaking play sioni vaki out of utah is my number four number three tyke smith out of georgia tyke smith in my opinion I feel like will be a 49er. Why? Because even though he's listed as a safety, let's say they don't go Mike Sandra still. Let's say they don't go and they address the safety with a different type of safety. They could draft him. He will come in and play nickel straight up. He's actually a better nickel corner than he is safety. He this uh, Tyke Smith is going to be a problem. He's short. He's 5'10", 202, has the body in the frame. He's pretty athletic. Ran a 4'4", 6", 1'5", 36-inch vert. Uh, 10 uh, feet broad jump. I like Tyke Smith. I don't know why he's being overshadowed. Javon Buller is the other safety. I think the 49ers actually met with him. But Tyke Smith is a safety that the Niners could bring in. And right away, you could throw him in there as your nickel back. And he will play the nickel back spot well. There are some NFL analysts out there that are saying that he's the best nickel back in the draft. I think it's Mike Sandra still. But I know he's listed as a, listed as a safety, but you got to watch the film when the formations where he plays nickel. Uh, 212 total tackles, 21 and a half tackles for a loss. This production is crazy. Five sacks, eight interceptions, eight interceptions, and 12 pass deflections. Tyke Smith, again, he's listed as a safety, but the 49ers can find a way to utilize him as a nickel. Right. They can they can make him into a nickel. OK, they can make him into a nickel. All right. Here we go. That was my number three. My number two is Kalen Bullock. Kalen, Kalen Bullock out of USC, the University of South Carolina. Didn't test too well at the NFL Combine. Asked me if I care. Didn't test at all pretty much. But he did run. Uh, he ran a 4 4 8 1 5 1 10 yard split. He's 6 2, 32 and a half inches arms. 188 pounds, so he's a little lightweight, but I tell you what, he is the center fielder that you want out there because he gets balls. He's a ball-hawking center fielder. As far as his tackles, they're there. I mean, he had 151 total tackles, but none for a loss, no sacks. He's a guy that's going to play deep. He's not a guy that you're going to blitz, you're going to get up there. Nah, that's not who he is. He has nine interceptions throughout his collegiate career. He's only played three years at USC. Nine interceptions in three years, yeah. 15 pass deflections. I like the fact that the 49ers, I'm hoping that they change the philosophy of how they utilize safety. It's okay to have the combo safeties, but how about you get the best deep safety, the best free safety, and then get the best strong safety. I know Niners want their guys interchangeable. They want them to be able to play free. They want them to be able to play in the box. 
I think they could go out there and get a ball hawk. He gives me Kyle Hamilton vibes. He's not Kyle Hamilton, but he gives me those vibes. And I think he if he puts on a couple of another 10 to, to, to 15 pounds, he is going to have a nice build. He's already 6'2". You could put on the right muscle weight. Oh, man, this kid's going to be dynamic wherever he goes. Again, he's a ball hawk. Kalen Bullock um, out of USC. And then my number one, my number one, my number one safety is going to be Tyler Newbin out of Minnesota. I mean, he's just the best. If, if you don't put Cooper DeJean as a safety, he's probably the best safety in this draft. Um, Tyler Newbin out of Minnesota. 207 total tackles. Four and a half for a loss. Two sacks, an interception, 11 pass deflections. Let me see if I can pull up his, uh, his stuff real quick. Talk a little bit more about Tyler Newbin. All right, so it says Tyler Newbin, as far as his, he ran a 4.56 and a 40. Um, he's six feet, about 200 pounds. 4.56 is not bad. I, I don't see the 40, like the 49ers, Tyler who Fungus 4.6. Jair Brown, I think, is in the 4, maybe 4.5, four, 4 something range as far as speed because you saw him be able to run somebody down. So Tyler Newman would fit well. Again, he could play. He's going to be playing that deep safety. Let me look a little bit more up on, on Tyler Newman for you guys because I want to see mainly where he takes his snaps. <clears throat> Yeah, so free, and he's going to play free, man. He's, he's definitely going to be the guy that's going to be back there deep. He had an 89.2 PFF grade, too, by the way, a 90.1 coverage grade. He was targeted, uh, we'll get to that, five total pressures. He had his finish with the sack this past season. Um, but, again, uh, last season he was targeted. Let me, let me get this. He was targeted 20 times. He gave up six receptions. So, if there's a team in dire need of a safety, like Green Bay will probably take a safety, but they'll probably go after the Cooper DeJean or whatever. A, I'm, I'm trying to think of some other teams that may that need a safety safety right away. Uh, I'm not sure. But this kid is going to ball out. Tyler Newbin is my number one safety. Again, number five, Kitan Oladapo uh, from Oregon State. Number four, Sione Vaki from Utah. Number three, Tyke Smith from Georgia. Number two, Kalen Bullock from USC and number one, Tyler Newbin from Minnesota. Let me know what you guys think, man. Who, which one would you pick in the comment section of the show? I got to go through these guys. I got to go through some sleepers. Uh, so my sleeper defensive line is going to be McKinley Jackson out of uh, Mississippi. So make sure you look him up and don't, don't sleep on it. Northern Iowa's Christian Boyd. That that that's another player. Christian Boyd. All right. As far as edge rushers, give me a second. Let me go through my list. Just go back to the edge. Um, I I know a lot of people aren't talking much about him, but Jalex Hunt out of uh, Christian University. I really do like this guy. I think he could be a, a problem. So he's a sleeper. Keep your um, ears out for him. As far as linebackers, um. I can see the 49ers looking at uh, Edufuan Ulufoshio, an outside linebacker out of Washington. Keep your eyes and ears out for Ed Edufuan Ulufoshio, all right, out of Washington. I like him a lot. Um, as far as my safe uh, corners, Elijah Jones is the cornerback that if the Niners don't take one of these top corners, they could get him. Nobody's talking about Elijah Jones out of Boston College. That's my sleeper corner, all right. Uh, I need to make sure I write these down too. And then, and then, uh, as far as safety, I think I covered all of them. Uh, safeties, give me a sec, 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 sec. Hey, ah man, safeties. I didn't like the way they play. Oh, safety. Josh Proctor would be a sleeper pick out of the Ohio State. Check out Josh. Proctor out of the Ohio State. So those are going to be my sleeper picks, guys. Let me know what you think in the comment section, man. I appreciate you guys 1,000%. I forgot to put this banner on there. My bad. My apologies. I do appreciate you guys, man, for joining uh, and joining into the show. 
tuning in and getting that good old info from your boy Breezy, man. Till the next time, man, we're going to jump up out of here. Stay up, man. It's draft day, baby. Let's get this team back to the chip, baby. Love y'all. Peace. I be sipping gold for whiskey on the rocks And a 24 karat gold on a watch My 71 Chevy be tipping non-stop Sounding like Trent Williams on the block So you know we can't stop, we be banging through your speakers Wayne Breezy on the filter in the bleachers You can tune into my show and I'm a teacher Wayne Breezy the phone I preacher